Thanks for tuning in to Just Reviews. Today we're going to cover an H1 Zoom recorder and its accessory kit. We're going to do a quick unboxing and then give you our initial reactions. Right off the bat, I can notice that this box is a little bit aged. This isn't a new product, it's been on the market for years, so if you get one of these, you're probably going to notice that your box is a little bit aged and worn. It's not a bad thing. If they're stored well, there should be no damage. I open the box, I have the Zoom recorder, I have what looks like a cheap alkaline AA battery, and then I also have the instruction manual, registration card, but what catches my eye is the micro SD card and the micro SD card adapter. So the Zoom One recorder uses a micro SD card and this one's two gigabytes. Wave files are smaller, a lot smaller than video files, so you can hold a lot of audio data on a two gigabyte card. So we'll put that off to the side and now we'll get into the Zoom One recorder itself. Take it out of the plastic. First thing, as soon as I can pick it up, I can notice it's very light. So positive and negative side of it being light is that if you're going to mount it on top of a DSLR camera, you're going to you know, hook it to your belt clip or for whatever reason to run a boom pole, that's the less weight that you have to carry. On the flip side of that coin though, however, it's very, very light, which tells me that the build quality might be not as superior as some other recorders, such as the H4, H5, or H6. So very light, which is nice if you're going to mount it on a DSLR camera or if you're going to use it on the go, but at the same time, just keep in mind that you need to take care of it. A, a simple drop onto concrete, potentially into a small puddle, and this thing is history. So we'll go around the exterior of the machine, we'll talk about the buttons and their functions. Starting on the front of the machine, you can see up here you have your dual condenser microphones in the XY pattern. That's going to be where you record your main audio onto your onboard mic. You can obviously also plug in outboard mics, and we'll get to that in just a minute. On the front you have your digital display screen. This is going to read your meters, it's going to tell you your audio levels, it's going to tell you your file uh, sizes, names, as well as their length. So that's all your information on front, as well as this big, well, reddish uh, record button right there on the front. That's obviously your record button. On the side, as we move to this side of the machine, we have our line in. This is where you can plug in any number of microphones, and I've got a couple here on the table that we'll talk about in a few minutes, your lavalier mic or the very popular Rode uh, boom mic. Then you also have your input levels. If you don't want to use the automatic setting and you actually want to maintain your audio yourself and run it manually, you can run the input level right there with your recording level. Coming down the side, then you can also see you have uh, your, your track buttons, so if you want to skim through your tracks, listen to playbacks, you know, what you recorded, you have the ability to do that, as well as a trash button so that you can delete it. And then right down here you have your hold lock button as well as you know power button in one. So that's how you lock the machine, which is always important if you're on, you know, on a set in recording, you want to make sure you lock it, as well as your USB device where you can plug it in, download information off of the machine, as well as potentially recharge any rechargeable batteries that you might have in the device. Uh, going to the other side of the machine, you have your output where you plug in your monitors, your headphones, um, listen to it, you can change your volume for your output there, and then your micro SD card slot right there on the side, as I said. So that, we'll open that up. This, right off the bat, I can feel that this little door here is, is chintzy. It's not gonna last very long. You have to be very delicate with it. It has one of those very cheap um, plastic hinges off on the side, so you have to be careful when opening it. And the cards are tiny, so they, you can lose them very easily, but that's where you put the recording, uh, that's where you put the card in to capture the recording material. So, and then onto the back of the machine. Back of the machine, a couple nice features. There you go, you have your battery hole where you put your AA battery. You also have a mic stand attachment, so if you get the accessory kit, which we'll go over in a few moments, you can plug in your mic attachment there and put it on a mic stand um, or a small tripod or, or many different devices. Then you also have your filters on the back, so you can change your format from WAV format to MP3 depending on PC versus Macintosh. Then you have your audio level if it's, if it's going to be automatic, your recording level if it's automatic or if you want it on manual, as well as your low cut filter. So those, uh, that's the machine from the top as well. And then on the bottom you also have a little speaker so you actually could um, monitor some audio just from the device itself. So it's a, it's a nice little machine. We'll talk more about the functionality here in, in just a few minutes. I just wanted to give an initial reaction to taking the machine out of the box and we'll get into the uh, accessory kit here just in a minute. So zoom on recorder. Uh, initial reactions, build quality is a little bit lower than I was expecting, um, but at the same time its functionality is a lot stronger and what it's used for, it it's really can't be matched. So, you know, a little poo-poo on that side, but there's other benefits to the machine. At the same time, the cost uh, versus other pro audio recording machines, you really can't beat. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, getting to the accessory kit. 
Same story on the packaging, slightly aged, been out for years. Um, no big deal, that doesn't bother me. Open the box. The nice packaging, I mean, it's all put in there relatively well. Oh, there's our tab. Open this guy up. All right, so accessory kit, we've got a couple things. A case, first and foremost. Uh, this And this is why I got it. The accessory kit was, I think, 10 to $15 extra over the price of the recorder, which was $99. I just bought it straight up. I didn't try to fight for a cheaper price on eBay, um, which is available out there. So I got the accessory kit because I like little cases for things. I, I figure if you're gonna invest the amount of money, $100 on a recorder, invest the $10 on a case. You know, if you spend 10% on protection, spend 10% of what you're gonna spend on all your gear on protecting your gear, and your gear will last a little bit longer. So this is a nice case, says zoom right on the outside, um, and obviously it's designed to fit the zoom recorder right in there, and it's got a little lanyard, uh, little lanyard in there. It uh, feels nice, it's not low quality, it's decently made, so again, a little bit of protection for a underbuilt electronic that has incredible sound capturing capability. Your pop filter, um, there's a lot of different names out there for this, but it's a pop filter. This goes on the top of the device. If you're gonna be doing voiceovers or you wanna you know, um, just get nice clean audio and, and you say the letter P at all, you're gonna wanna use that. It really helps keep down those pops, really helps those uh, that audio come back a lot cleaner as well as block out some um, ambient noise in the background. Now I had mentioned a mic stand. Uh, I'm not gonna take this out of plastic. It's, well I will. Um, it's just a mic stand. It's a piece of plastic. <clears throat> uh, it goes into mic stands. So you can take the recorder. It screws right into the back here. And then you can clip that right on a mic stand. So if you wanted to do some stand up vocals, you wanted to sing into it, um, anything like that, that's what that is for. So. It's another accessory in the box. Keep it looking nice. Next thing is this nice little tripod. Um, now this is kind of cool. Uh, when I was looking at the accessory kit, it's not something I would normally buy, but if it's gonna come with the accessory kit that's like 10 bucks, I, all I really wanted was the case. Um, why not? Because you can take this and you know a couple other people that I work with, they saw like, oh, that looks pretty cool. So you got your little tripod there, you put your zoom recorder right on top of it, you can sit right at your desk at home on your PC and you can do your podcasts, whatever it may be. Um, and that's gonna help keep it off your surfaces, any vibrations, um, knocking it around, maybe a kid or a pet might hit it. So they get something to be considered. Uh, USB cable, standard uh, USB cable to hook it up to your computer. And then the last thing we have in here is what looks like your plug. So if you wanted to charge your rechargeable batteries, you could standard USB rechargeable device. So that is the accessory kit that comes, well, that doesn't come with, but you can buy additionally to the H1 Zoom Recorder. And I recommend it for the case, for the pop filter, for the mic stand, for the little tripod, and for the, and for the re, uh, recharger, why not? It was only 10 to $15. 10% for protection and uh, it'll come back to, to benefit you in the future. So let's talk about at this point, why would you want a Zoom recorder? What are the kind of people that want Zoom recorders? So I work in media, I make a lot of YouTube videos, uh, a lot of people out there getting into that social media aspect and a lot of people are buying all kinds of gear. There's so much different gear out there uh, from audio to video to all, and all the little accessories that go around it. I've seen people buy everything and I've seen people buy a lot of bad things that they don't need. I've seen them spend too much money or not spend enough money. So as somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, I understand what it's like to live on a budget and to try to get prosumer gear that's going to function at a professional level to give you what I call a professionally independent result. So that's, that's what we're going for. So you would get the H1 Zoom Recorder if you wanted to capture professional audio. It's $100 for the Zoom Recorder. So if you're gonna spend $100 to record audio, you either better sing, work on the radio, or work in, in media in some fashion. So uh, you wanna get that clean audio because every cell phone now has an audio recording device that you can copy memos onto, you can report people on the street, and if that's your level of sound quality that you're okay with, then that's fine. But if you're getting into professional video and you've been using a DSLR camera for a little while and you've started to use other microphones besides the onboard mic, um, most popular is the Rode mic. I'm sorry, uh, this is the, the Rode uh, Boom mic. It's, it comes in a great kit. It's one of the most popular, low cost. This also is about $100. Uh, and then you can get a bunch of other smaller accessories that can maximize any situation for professionally independent audio. But the problem is when 
when you when you go ahead and, and I'll show you how this works, this is a great setup too. This is not to be uh, looked down upon. This is uh, something a lot of people can use. It's highly efficient. You can. I have a 70D here, which is a crop sensor DSLR, and I'm going to use this Rode boom mic um, on top with a 3.5 mil, uh, millimeter audio jack cable. Now the difference right there is that you get into XLR versus um, 3.5 millimeter cables, grounded versus non non grounded. But for us, as people with not a lot of money, uh, and this is what we have to make work, you'll see a lot of people hitting the streets with this setup right here. DSLR camera and a, and a top mounted uh, road mic. So this is a great setup and you're gonna capture really good audio with this. You're gonna capture better audio than your onboard mic, but it's still not gonna be professional and here's why. Um, DSLRs, especially Canon DSLRs, have less than quality preamps in them. So you will get what's, and I'll do the test here for you in a minute, you'll get this ambient hiss in the back of all of your audio. No matter what microphone, you can plug a $10,000 microphone into your DSLR camera and you're still gonna get that preamp hiss and it's, it's not acceptable at my level. So we have to get around that. So we've used Zoom, one, uh, zoom recorders for years now. We specifically use a lot of the H4 Zoom recorder, but I wanted something a little bit lighter. I wanted something for less money than the Zoom 4, 5, or 6. So that's why I went with the Zoom 1. So this right here is a great kit. You know, with the Rode mic plugged into your DSLR camera, you're gonna be able to capture everything. And if you do a majority of your work on YouTube, like I do, you don't need a full frame uh, sensor and you don't need um, an XLR mounted microphone on top of that camera. You can get away with a 3.5 millimeter um, Rode Boom video mic and you can get away with a crop sensor camera and still have prosumer looking results, but if you want professional results, if you want better than prosumer audio, then you need to circumvent that uh, preamp preamp hiss that you find on DSLR cameras. So that's why we have the Zoom 1 recorder. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to circumvent that preamp by recording into an exterior recording device, in this case our Zoom 1 recorder. You just simply plug your 3.5 millimeter jack into your line in cable on your Zoom recorder. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this because obviously this is, this is not gonna work great. Um, I would have to add, I have around me a boom pole, I have extension cables, so I could do a couple different things and I'll show you another way to mount this here in just a few seconds. But the point of this is, is that right now, instead of recording, recording through the less than quality preamp on the DSLR, we're circumventing that and recording directly into the H1 Zoom recorder, which is a quality professional recording device. And we'll give you this, the audio samples right here. This recording is through the onboard mic of the DSLR. The quick fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. This recording is through the Rode video mic plugged into the preamp on the DSLR. The quick fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. This recording is through the Rode video mic direct line into the H1 zoom recorder. The quick fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. So there you have it, a side by side by side comparison of audio being recorded in three different ways, the same audio that is. So there you can compare each one. And even right now as we're recording direct line into the DSLR, you can probably hear that hiss because our brand new recorder hasn't been put into use yet. So from now on, all our videos should have nice clean audio for you. And in our next video, we're gonna compare the Zoom 1 recorder to its next biggest brother, the Zoom H4 recorder. Now these have a, a bunch of differences from price to inputs, outputs, and recording styles. So if you want to see that video, go ahead and follow the link. If you enjoyed this review, give us a quick thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in to Just Reviews.